fifth graders Welcome so back. we have this new game here at the tv classroom <laughs> miss oslin and i tend to chat between episodes and mr kevin has decided he's going to see if he can catch us and get the starter while we're having a conversation <laughs> it's this new game we're playing <laughs> let's check in with our zones friends okay zone check-in coming How are you right up. today yeah today sometime today sometime today mr <laughs> kevin zone check-in i think mr kevin was having too much fun trying to trick us no. No? Oh. <laughs> Friends, we have a good time here at the TV classroom. So, how are you feeling today? What's your body feeling? What's your brain feeling? How are your emotions feeling? Ms. Foslin? I'm in the green zone. I am... Fun fact about me. Mm-hmm. Um, I am not what we call a morning person. Oh. When I wake up... Like, I am just kind of wake up grumpy no matter how much sleep I've had. Mm -hmm. I can't really talk. I'm not in my best zone in the morning. I have to wake up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But Mm. it's been a lot easier this week because the weather has been so nice. Beautiful. That for me, it's hard to be grumpy even in the morning when it looks like this outside. And the mountain has been out. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the green zone. I'm good to go. Yeah, it's really funny, Miss Oslin. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot about how Miss Oslin and I are very opposite, mm-hmm. and I am a morning person. I would rather go to work when no one's there, get up early, have my coffee, get a bunch done, then by the afternoon my work's done, I can just relax. It's so interesting. Mm-hmm. We're just very different, but we work yeah. well together. It's great. Um, what zone am I in? Um, I'm in the green zone in my brain and in my emotions. I'm in the blue zone in my body. Yeah. I think it's going to be like that all week. Yeah. But that's okay. Just because my body hurts doesn't mean I can't think. Mm-hmm. That's true. So here we are. I had a really rough start to my day. Yes. Really rough. Like, really rough. Yeah. But guess what? I did it. You did. Once you I just had started. to get started, yeah. and it's just get rolling, and uh, I'm good to go yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Mr. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm in the green zone. Good. Yeah. Great. All right. Three personal standards. Always review them. Today and every day. When we come together, we agree to show show respect, respect, make good decisions, decisions, solve problems. problems. And that show respect thing, like the game that we're playing with Mr. Kevin, this is friendly friendly kidding. kidding Because we're all in agreement that it's funny. We're all in agreement that we're kind of playing this little game together. Mm -hmm. And we're all okay with it. Mm -hmm. If one of us all of a sudden decided we weren't okay with it, it would stop. It stops. But that's an example of friendly kidding Mm -hmm. and not teasing yeah but if like mr kevin were filming someone that he didn't know oh no he wouldn't do that he would never do that when we first started filming with mr kevin mm -mm, he very much we just did because he didn't know us yet yeah Yeah. but then once he got to know us we have fun here in the tv we can do some friendly kidding Mm -hmm. i think it's safe to say we're friends now i would say we are yeah yeah i would hang out with you guys outside of work for sure i would yeah All right, let's check in with our scientific process and how science works. Yeah, and where we are in it today. Right, and we've been having this conversation with all the grade levels this week about science isn't just an experiment. It's not just in a lab. It's not just chemicals. Mm -mm. It's not just this thing you do for 30 minutes in class and then it goes away. Right. It's not just reading an article, highlighting, and then being done. Being done. It's this process you go through in your brain. Mm -hmm. It never ends. Yeah, there's no, we keep pointing this out, that there's no finish line. There's no look the at that. End. Look at that graphic organizer. Mm-mm. There's no end. Mm-mm. It just goes around and around because there is an infinite amount of things to learn about subjects mm-hmm. in the world around us. And we don't have answers for everything. Mm-mm. So we need people who are interested in it to continue investigating and learning. Mm-hmm. We spent a lot of time in this section. We have. Because it's important. Mm-hmm. This is where we get curious. Right. Where, where you we start want to learn. Right. And you start to find something that you really want to investigate. Mm-hmm. You ask questions. 
make observations. Share ideas about what you think you know. Mm -hmm. And then you could do some reading about science discoveries Mm -hmm. or input charts. This could also include like listening to a podcast. Or watching a TED talk on something. Yeah. Watching experts speak. Mm -hmm. And then you take all that information Mm -hmm. and you like try to put it together to make an explanation. Mm -hmm. You'll gather more data. Ooh, this is when experiments come in. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You're interpreting your observations. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the experiments that you were thinking? Yeah, like looking at it and observing and gathering Mm -hmm. data from it, depending on what kind of science you're doing. And then this is where that I thought I know, but But now now I I think I know. Right. Because Go ahead. Sorry. Because our thinking changes as we know more and reflect upon Mm -hmm. what we thought we knew. Right. And great thinkers always go back and revise their thinking, but they always think they know. Mm -hmm. Because things are always changing and we're Mm -hmm. learning new things. And then you come up with kind of a conclusion and you can use that information to solve everyday problems like Mm -hmm. freshwater ecosystems and them being dirty and Mm -hmm. how that's unsafe for the salmon and what we're going to do about it. Right, fifth graders? Those Mm -hmm. are things that you can help us solve and become members of our community that are being environmental heroes and saving our Salish Sea. Mm -hmm. This isn't where it ends, though. No. (laughs) Because you still have to answer questions. Yep. Satisfy curiosity. And then you can go to other places. Yes. And you get more questions. Yes. And you have to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. I have a video for us today. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Are you okay with that, Mr. Kevin? I absolutely am. I'm just, I I figured I'd have to change uh, views while you got it set up. Will it work? Oh, no, it works right in my. It works right in there. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Video. Is there audio with this? Mm-mm. Okay. Maybe some music. Pretty cool. Uh huh. Think about what you're noticing and wondering. (gasps) Okay. What were you wondering and noticing about that video? Huh. Mr. Kevin, what were you wondering and noticing? So I was thinking, those little babies must have just hatched. Mm. They were pretty tiny, weren't they? Mm-hmm. And did you notice they had big tummies? Yep. And I'm, I'm wondering if if that's where their nutrients are. Like they they use that to grow. Mm. Interesting wondering. Mm-hmm. What were you noticing, Miss Oslin? Um, I was noticing the same thing. I was making a connection to our salmon life cycle chart. Mm-hmm. And I know that that is a video from our Foss Waterway Seaport and the salmon eggs that hatched there. Well, and I was noticing that there was like this black thing on the bottom and it kind of looked like we were looking through glass. So I was wondering if it was some kind of aquarium and I noticed the pebbly rocks and I remembered from our chart that we call that the red. It's like the nest where they Mm -hmm. lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. I think that was we were watching part of the salmon life cycle happen. I think so. Pretty, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, See? oh, it's so great because Mr. Kevin, it follows our essential question every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was why are salmon so important, important to, to the Salish, Salish Sea? sea? So, are you ready? More about that. We're, we're ready. ready. Ready for our big science word. Okay. Wow, we Inter- learned a lot. Interdependence. Interdependence. When two, two or more things need each other. other, they're depending on each other. They are. They need each other to survive. 
I think at this point it's safe to say that we have learned that everything in our environment is interdependent. Interdependent when two, two or more, more things, things need, need each other. other. Because if you think about like the stream and the creek and the, the water and the salmon, like all of those things need each other to survive. They do. We learned about the intertidal zone, and that's the shore area exposed between high tide and low tide. You get into those tide pools and see those echinoderms mm -hmm. and the crabs yes. and the sea mollusks and all the really cool mm -hmm. things. We learned that a habitat is the natural environment of a plant mm -hmm. or animal. And we learned that conservation is the act of keeping and protecting from waste, loss, or destruction. Mm -hmm. This is how we keep our planet healthy. Mm -hmm. We learned the word migrate, which is the act of moving from one region to another, which salmon do. We're going to learn more about that today. We are. And then ecosystem, which is a community of living things together with their environment. So the habitat is just their natural environment. Just where they the live. thing, like just the one animal. It's where they live. Yeah. The ecosystem is the community. All of the environments working together. So we could say for us, Tacoma is our ecosystem. Right. This is where we live and work together. And it includes us. We are included in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But it also includes other people and other mm -hmm. living things mm -hmm. and other, other different habitats. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to learn the word incubate. Oh. I've heard this before. Yeah? When did you hear it? Um, when I was in fifth grade and we raised chickens. Mm-hmm. We had this little incubator, mm -hmm. and it was, like, warm, and you put the eggs in it, mm -hmm. and sadly, none of ours hatched. Oh, I wonder why. We think that our teacher turned the incubator too hot. Oh, that happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked at that word incubate, and I thought of the word cube, because I hear cube, cube. in it. Mm. I don't know. I couldn't quite figure out a meaning from that. Mm -hmm. And a meaning is to keep warm until it's time to hatch. Exactly like what you said. Not too warm, though. <laughs> Not too warm. Lesson warm learned. Won't hatch. Ooh. And the sentence is, a hen incubates her eggs by sitting on them. Hmm. A hen keeps her eggs warm until they hatch by sitting on them. I'm making a connection mm. that salmon yes. spawn and lay their eggs in their red, mm -hmm. and like in there, and I'm wondering if that helps them incubate and stay warm mm -hmm. from the winter time. Mm. I bet we'll find out today. I bet we will. Okay, let's practice our Chant. sound off. Hmm? We did it really well last session. I'm really excited. Yeah, here okay, go. here we go. We just know what we've been told. Ecosystems worth their weight in gold. Work together so all survive. Balance allows everything to survive. Ba sound off. All survive. <laughs> sound off. To stay alive. Sound off. off. One, two, three, four. Living things, flora and fauna, micros too, need synergy for all they do. The sun provides the energy. So plants produce with efficiency. Sound off. Synergy. Sound off. Energy. Sound, Sound off. off. One, two, two three, three, four. four. Living, Living things. things. Plant producers make good. Hmm. <laughs> Rewind. Rewind. Producers make food consumers need. Plants and grasses for their feed. All along nutrients they send. On an, on one another they depend. <laughs> Sound off. Producers. Sound off. Consumers. Sound, Sound off. off. One, two, three, four. Living, Living things. things. Fifth graders, I hope you're doing it with I, us. You better be doing this with us. If one is gone, the chain is broke. Eco balance is not a joke. If one is gone, another dies. Extinction happens before our eyes. Sound off. Relationships. Sound off. Dependency. Sound, Sound off. One, two, three, four. Living, Living things. things. Pollution can be the thing to blame. So habitat must be kept the same. Soil, water, air, it's true. Clean and pure for me and you. Sound off. Clean and pure. Sound off. For me and you. Sound off. One, One two, three, four. Living, living things. things. Did it again. Boop. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we did great. All right. Okay. We are going to review. Quickly, just the different stages. Mm -hmm of the salmon life cycle. We're not even gonna read all the information because we're gonna deep dive into the migration yep. cycle. Yes. So we just wanna go over this chart first, talk about the salmon life cycle, and then we're gonna move to the other one. Mr. Kevin, would you mind moving us down to Ms. Othlin's hands? I am on, I am on Here we go, that. she's I'm gonna catch it. The, okay, are you I'll ready? Help her. Are you ready to catch it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, almost, hang on just a second, let me get my, 
Let me get my bearings here. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So we're about to move Come on. you. We're going to move you. I'm going to pull us. Ready? Are you ready? Okay. Wait, wait. Could I'm going to pull us. Yeah, could you grab Hang it? Could yep. You, okay, okay. Here we go. Ready? Here, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Oh, there oh. we go. Oh, that was really fun. Great job, okay. Mrs. Wally. Phew. <laughs> I'm just all awesome. She's laughing. I'm so glad I made you laugh. Okay. We haven't decided if it's the spawning adult or the eggs that start first. That's an age-old question. Age-old question. No one actually knows the answer to. No. Nope. So we're going to start with eggs. There's eggs. They hatch. They become the alevin, which is what we saw in that video. Yes. They have the yolk sac. Yep. And then they turn into the fry. Mm -hmm. And then we learn from some experts that they, the par and the fry are very similar mm -hmm. in stage. So they kind of, those kind of go together. Mm -hmm. Then they become the smolt. And that's a time they spend a lot of time as a smolt. Mm -hmm. Then they become an adult. And then they really change. They, they change do. shape. They change color as they become a spawning adult. Mm -hmm. And then they spawn and they die. The cycle in. And they've laid eggs, and it starts again. Yep. And it's some fish. Well, we'll learn here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the migration cycle. So I'm going to move this. I'm just going to toss it on the floor. So on this migration cycle, Mr. Kevin, you could. Um, yes, I am on have that too. Let's see. I have one, two, three. I need to zoom four, in on you here. Five. One, two. Three, four, five, and arrows. Before I do that, I'm going to draw the land in so we can kind of see the land and the water. So this migration this cycle is going to tell us what are salmon doing during their lives? We know that they go through a life cycle where they mm -hmm. change their form, they change their color, they change where they are and what they're doing. But so what are they doing? Where they are and what they're during, doing during that life cycle what am i doing during what are they yeah, what is their job like what what's their purpose and that's going to be really important in us understanding understanding my goodness why they are so important to the salish sea so we've got all this land and it starts up here as a stream up in a mountain and goes to a creek and then meanders its way out into a bay and then to the ocean. And out here's the ocean where they're at. Right? And there's all different pathways for them to get out here to this ocean. We so learned about that. We, we learned did. about, well, I guess we learned about where they are mm -hmm. when they are um, in this, in the Pacific Ocean. So this first cycle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a snapshot of some coho salmon over a few years. So you're going to see some months and some dates to give you an idea of what's happening and how long they're in each stage. Mm -hmm. So this was just for January. And in the winter, each female coho lays about 1,500 to 3,000 eggs in a shallow gravel red or nest in a freshwater stream. So here's the gravel and then inside, she's dug and laid all thousands and thousands of eggs. Okay. Let's stick it right here so we can have that. And then we move to the next part of the migration cycle. And this part of the cycle is happening between February and March of the same year. And we're going to follow the eggs. Um, out of that multitude of eggs, thousands of eggs, only about 200 to 300 juvenile coho will survive. So that's about 10%. That's not very many. Yeah. Wow. These vulnerable youngsters live in shallow areas. That means not deep. Shallow areas of the stream where they hide among rocks, roots, and other debris and feed on insects and small fish. Here they are, the little guys. They're here. Because I'm doing this call out, so here they are swimming along, living their best life, hiding in the rocks and the trees and that vegetation we talked about last time mm -hmm. in the freshwater stream, why that's so important. Because if they don't have a place to hide from predators, mm -hmm. guess what? You're done. They're not part of that 10%. Nope. So wow. then... Then we go to... Woo! 
Mm, green. Sorry. Spring of 2012. What's happening here? So we started with the eggs that were about mm -hmm. 1,500 to 3,000 eggs. Mm -hmm. Of those, only two to 300 juvenile coho will survive. Mm -hmm. Of those 200 to 300, only about 50 to 100 of those juvenile mm -hmm. will become smolts the next spring. And they they live kind of in the same area. So I'm gonna just kind of draw them right here. I forgot to sketch in my smolt. That's okay. And as they migrate out to sea, so this is where the migration is gonna start, smolts lose the pattern of bars and dots that help them hide from predators. Mm -hmm. So their structure is going to change to help them survive. And their gills and kidneys change so they can process salt water. Now we learned oh. about the freshwater system. Now they're transitioning from freshwater to salt water. So their bodies have to change in order for them to oh. survive in a different kind of I water. I see. So here they're bigger. Their bodies are changing and adapting. And they don't have those fingerling markings anymore. They have more of like some specks. I've seen them like this before. Okay, then, so that happens here. Then what happens? Then they're there from summer of 2012 to November of 2013. So hang on, yeah. we go from summer to summer and then to November. Yeah, so smolts mature out at sea for 18 months, about 18 months. Okay, here we go. They're growing up out at sea. 2012 to November, 2013, and they've gotten, they look like salmon, they're mm -hmm. adults. Here they are. I would love to see some of your salmon drawings. Yes. I think we should have Miss Teresa do a, has she done a salmon she drawing has, yet? She has, she did a bear and a salmon. Oh, and she brought in a right. picture of a bear that she took up at Mount Rainier. Okay. So here they are. They're maturing and growing up. And then what happens? Now, this is, now it's been three years. Three years after they, ha they hatched, adults, this is crazy. They return to the same creek where they were born in order to spawn their own eggs. Unlike some other fish, coho only reproduce one time before they die. That is their entire purpose. The original, this is just crazy, of the original 1,500 to 3,000 eggs laid by each female coho, it may only yield or end up with one to four fish that survive to return as adults. Wow. wow. What's really interesting during this phase is they change. They make a big change and they turn a red color, especially the males make the biggest change. The males get these big, huge hooks on the front. The females don't change quite as much, but there's a definite difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And this is when they start finding and spawning mm -hmm. and then laying eggs and spawning and creating the next generation of coho salmon. That's why it's called a cycle, right? It it's a migration cycle. So they start up in the creek. They come down into a stream and a river. They migrate out to sea where they grow up and mature. Then they get ready for their journey. And one thing we learned, as they come back and enter into the fresh water, they no longer eat. Mm -hmm. They stop eating. Their only job out here is their job to get nutrients and get food fat and big mm -hmm. so they can make their journey all the way back upstream. If you remember the streams, they have a current going this way. So they have to fight it all the way up. If there's waterfalls, they have to jump up them. Mm -hmm. Then they go all the way back up and the ones who make it spawn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they almost make it and just miss it. Ugh. It's a really interesting mm -hmm. process. And then they lay the next generation of coho salmon. And this is out here where they're part of the Salish Sea and right. the food web and the interdependence that happens out there. So then the question is, then why are these salmon important to this Salish Sea? Why is this process important for here? Think about what these salmon are providing our Salish mm. Sea. Hmm. What's their job, Ms. Oslin? They're gonna write 
about what are ways that the migration of salmon might be interrupted by humans. Oh. Ooh. So how might we as humans interrupt this natural process? You can think about the freshwater stream. Think about the things we do with freshwater streams. Mm -hmm. Think about what we've learned from Foss Waterway Seaport, from our trip to the Tacoma Nature Center. What we use salmon for? To Swan Creek. Hmm. So that's your job. Now, you can share that information any way you want. Yeah. You could write a poem. That would be neat. Ooh, you could write a folktale. Ooh, about why, how the human and the salmon are whatever you think they yeah. are. You could write a song or a rap. Mm -hmm. You could make some art. Totally. That would be awesome. You could be drama and sketch it out. Oh, yeah, you could. Yes, I, Mr. Kevin? I was thinking you could uh, write write something from the salmon's perspective. <gasps> oh, Mr. Kevin. what a great idea. That's brilliant. Oh, I hope someone sends in something from the salmon's perspective. Yes. Oh, I would love it. I cannot wait to see your creations on Flipgrid. Now, if you don't want to go on Flipgrid and you feel nervous about that, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin, how can they send it directly to me and Miss Oslin? Well, fifth graders, easy, easy. Just uh, email us on your laptop, mm -hmm. tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. You can always mail us something to the TV Classroom headquarters here at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Awesome. Today, it's time for our affirmation, or now it's time for our affirmation. And today, we learn a lot about our ecosystem here in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for us all to remind ourselves how we as humans have an impact, positive or negative, negative we have a consequence. on our ecosystem. Consequences aren't always negative. They can be positive. But our actions have consequences on our ecosystem. Exactly. So today, our affirmation is going to be, I recognize that I can have a positive or a negative impact on my ecosystem. Okay. Here I'll take go. a deep breath together. <sighs> and I, say our affirmation. I, I recognize, recognize that, that I can have a positive or negative impact on our ecosystem. ecosystem. Thank you so much, fifth graders. You worked so hard with us today. We yep. hope you have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you back here next time. Bye, friends. See you on Flipgrid. I can't wait to see those stories. Rules. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, 
You will get points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, use your math skills to see how many points you can get. Good luck.